Hi, this is James, and this is the LinkedIn Five Day Challenge Summary. In case you wanted to know the entire series and you didn't follow each single video, here's a way that I'm just going to summarize what it was that we were talking about. So the challenge was called the LinkedIn Five Day Challenge, and our goal is to show you how you can achieve free marketing using LinkedIn. And how we did that was we set forth the challenge over a five day period where we got contact 20 business owners a day. So for the five days and at the end of the five days, we should have 100 business leads or business owners that are leads by connecting with them. So that was the challenge that we set forth and we recorded each day as it occurred. So one of the first things that I want to tell you in terms of doing this challenge, it's free. It only takes your time and you need to put forth your effort and investment of time and you will get free marketing. You will have these free leads that you can use. Now the difference between doing this and the difference of doing paid marketing, there's a couple of things. Number one, when you're doing paid marketing, Somebody seeing your ad, they're clicking on it, going to your landing page on your website and fill out a form so they have an immediate need. The way we're doing it through the LinkedIn challenge, we are going outbound marketing where we're actually going physically out, reaching out to them, and we don't know if they have a need. So we're inquiring if they have a need. So that's a big difference because one is a hot lead and one is a lead that we're gonna to have to cultivate. So this cultivating will happen by following up with them. So initially what we did is we said we were gonna connect with them by using the connect feature on LinkedIn. In order to do that, the first steps in doing that process is to update your profile. Of course, if you don't have a profile, get a profile. But the first thing is to update it. You have to have a current profile. Make sure you refine anything that you have on there. Then you want to update it and then optimize it. What I mean by optimize? Well, listen, if you're in the business loan space, you have to use the language. You have to use whatever it is that people understand that you do. So you want to communicate with them. One of the ideas I shared with you was look at other people's profiles. Look at other business loan broker profiles and draw from that. Use that to give you hints of certain keywords and certain phrasing that you might want to use on your site. This way that you can grab somebody from one of the top lenders and put it on your site so you can kind of leverage what it is they're saying so that you can use it. Again, I'm not suggesting or advocating for plagiarizing. You know, you would get in trouble with that in school and we wouldn't want you to have anything plagiarized on your LinkedIn. But you can definitely take the creative liberties to modify, modify it to make it work for you. And that's the best way to do it. So the, that's the steps you want to have a profile. If you don't have one, you want to update your profile. Then you need to optimize your profile. The next step would be to constantly make yourself known on LinkedIn. And the suggested way of doing that is by posting relevant information on LinkedIn. And what do I mean by relevant information? You want to take any type of articles, whether it's on entrepreneur's website, maybe it's on Forbes, Inc. Magazine, wherever you could get content and share that with LinkedIn, you will do that. Because that's just gonna kinda keep them constantly updated that you're posting information. And it's more so they could see, it's your own marketing, they could see that you're the person posting this. The other thing that you could do is post certain success stories. You should post, oh, we funded this uh, plumbing company a $25,000 loan amount and they were happy because they were able to get that bid done that they won. Whatever it is, success stories really work. Any form of storytelling can really do well and you want to be able to have that on LinkedIn. The next way that you could do that is share statistics on LinkedIn. You can have some statistical fact about businesses in terms of 
one of the number one reasons is reasons business fail is because they do not have access to capital. And there's a strict statistic that you could pull from the SBA's website and you could post that as your post for the day. There's many ways, but what you want to do is you want to be the expert. You want to be the expert and the educator in the business loan space. This way, whenever you connect with somebody and they go to your profile, they can see your previous post, or they're going to currently get new posts that you are, are listing on there, they can then know that they're working with a credible person. And that's what you want to build. You want to build that knowledge base so that people can tell that you are the expert in the field. They will then have that trust in you that you know what you're doing and they'll want to work with you. It isn't until they have any type of relationship with you that they'll get to know you. So you kind of have to build that knowledge base. You have to build that trust, that level of trust so that you can build a relationship. And then that will lead to having the com conversation where you'll be able to then leverage your expertise and your knowledge to be able to help them get what it is they need. And that's a business loan. So while this way is a completely free way, it will take some time to cultivate. And when I mean by time, it's not an instant thing such as the leads that you get from your website because those people are definitely showing an interest because they need the money. Whereas we're building the relationship and requesting an opportunity to share with them, well, I'm a business loan broker, I can get you the money for your business. But if they're not understanding that they don't have a need at the moment, the timing might not be right but all business owners will have a need for capital at one time or another. So that's the focus that you need to have so that you don't lose sight of, although this is free marketing, it is something that will take time to build and time to develop. And if you continue with it, and as we always say, don't give up, don't quit, just keep at it on a regular basis. Remember, you're a business owner, you need to have certain things that you need to be doing and have that discipline to be able to reap the rewards associated with that. So what we did is we did a five day LinkedIn challenge. Our goal was to make connections with 20 people per day. What we did is we actually started the 20 per day. Day one, we did 20 requests, connection requests per day. At day one, we only actually connected with 17 people. Uh, so with event day two, we also put out 20 per day and we connected at that time with 12 people. Then we started saying, you know what, I think there's a need to increase the uh, connecting because we weren't seeing the momentum of being able to. So we increased that to 30 per day and it did work because that third day we were able to connect with 19 people so by that period we were already more than a halfway point and that's pretty good you want to be able to get there with our goal of being 100 connections day four we connected with 27 people and then day five we were able to hit up 26 that connected back with us so that added a total of 101 total connections and we're calling this leads because remember these are business owners. These are business owners that own a business. They connect it with us through LinkedIn. The quality of this type of person should be a little better because they have active uh, LinkedIn accounts. They're actually working the business and they're connecting with you. So these are prospects and we will use that in our marketing to be able to hit them up, whether it be by email, calls and so forth. So for the sake of the challenge, I shared with you, the first step is to connect with them. Second step is once they connect with you, you would then send them an email. And the email essentially will be something that kind of thanks them for connecting with you. It will also introduce yourself to them, showing them what business that you're in. And then you kind of have to request what is called a call to action. So in the email, I typically go into what we do. I give a little statistic about businesses in need of capital. And then I just kind of tell them if they are interested in a no obligation uh, conversation to determine if they qualify or what they might qualify for, reach back out to me 
And that has worked for me. It's been successful. We were able to get actually several conversations going in our test over the five days that resulted in having 15, that was 15 apps that were actually returned to, well, actually out, apps out. So of the conversations I had, I was able to get 15 apps out. I only got six back. You know how this works. Some people I have to chase. I sent the emails and follow up calls. I didn't get the apps back and that's okay. Maybe they weren't that interested. But of the six that I sent to the lenders, or the six that I got back, I did send to the lenders, and three of them went into underwriting. But out of the three that did go into underwriting, there was one that didn't qualify. So then out of the three, we got two deals done. One of the deals was for a $35,000 loan, and the other deal was a smaller amount, it was only $10,000. But out of that, we were able to make $4,500 in a commission. So when we estimated the amount of time that it took, and when I mean time, it's the time that it took to connect with them, writing the little introduction and emailing that to them. Then the time that it took to send the email that I told you about that I always send and customize an email to them. And also the time on the phone. When I did get somebody interested that wanted to have a phone call, that amount of time that I spent on the phone, as well as the time that I took to send the, the application to the lender. And then I always call the lender to let them know I just sent them something. So all that time we estimated and we rounded it up to about 10 hours total time over the five day period. So when you take the $4,500 commission over a 10 hour period, that's making $450 an hour. Not bad for free leads, is it? That's great even on a bad day. So that's what we showed you here in the LinkedIn challenge. It's very duplicatable. In fact, you can enhance those numbers. Instead of 30 a day or 20 a day, do 50 a day. It doesn't take a lot of time. And the focus of this was more about showing you how to achieve free marketing with very little time. All it took is your effort took the effort, and what I mean by effort, I mean, guys, <laughs> this isn't even effort. I was doing this on the treadmill at the gym, on my phone, connecting with 20 and 30 people a day. So it's not about the, the time, it's the effort that you put in. I wanted to do it. You could find and make the time. It doesn't take a lot of time, but I'll tell you what, the rewards can be handsome, as you can see through my example. And I still have a lot of people that, you know, those apps still didn't come back to me. Maybe they will. Maybe the timing's not right, but when I follow up, maybe I'll get another one. Who knows? But this is what we do. We have to have these conversations. We have to stay and have a process in place. You have to create your own steps that you want to take. Be very disciplined. One of the things we also learned of doing this LinkedIn challenge is that business owners seem to get in touch with us on off hours. So we notice a lot of activity in the evening, a lot of activity in the daytime. A lot of these people accepted my invitation to connect in the evening hours. So you have to kind of work with that. Send the email right after they send the connection back to you and connect with them in the evening hours. So we have to discipline ourselves also to work non-productive hours to our business in the non-productive time and off business hours. That's how I do it as well. I use off hours to be able to create opportunities that I can't do during the day. Nobody wants to have a phone conversation at midnight. So that's what you have to keep in perspective. So, but it doesn't take any time to craft an email or send an email at midnight if you want to. So those are the kind of things that you want to find that works for you. And again, Phil always talks about creating a business around your lifestyle. So those are the kind of things that you want to do to create the more time to have for yourself, for your family, for your friends, whatever it is that you're looking to do. And that's what I do as well. So my business really, we work during the morning hours, uh, mid-morning, like 11 and on, where we're really able to speak to business owners about the application, when we're accepting the application and sending it to the lender. I call the lender to, to let them know this is what I'm sending them. I follow up with them via email as well. So that's what you should do. Make sure you have your business set up where you're making the most 
uh, out of your time that you do put in and make sure that it's going to give you the best result and the benefit so you'll then have the opportunity to do more of that. So this was the LinkedIn challenge. Very simply put, it was a five-day challenge to make uh, at least 100 connections, and we're calling those free leads because there's no cost except the investment of your time. And out of those 101 that we connected over the five days, when I started doing my recap, we actually connected with a total of 117 out of 130. Still, people did not connect with me, even the ones that were out. So in the next coming weeks, months, whatever it might be, I may still get that. I'm not stopping my paid marketing. I also shared with you I'm still in business groups. And I also will be doing paid marketing, continuing that as well. And I'm going to still do this LinkedIn. It's not going to be a LinkedIn challenge. I'm just going to continue with LinkedIn. And I advise you might want to do that as well. So out of that, we were able to get two deals done. We were able to make $4,500. We said it was a 10 hour time period in terms of the total time invested over the five days. So put that in perspective. Most people, most people work an eight hour day, eight hours in one day. We almost did the equivalent of the work day of a regular person. So if you have a 40 hour work week, most people aren't making $450 an hour. So and people are definitely working a lot more. So if you just kind of put that in perspective, maybe the person's making $10 an hour. That's $80, $80 a day. And over five days, that's $400. We made $450 an hour in 10 hours. $4,500. So just put that in perspective. So then how many times do you want to do that? How many hours do you want to work? This is what we talk about where building a business around your lifestyle. So it doesn't take much, it just takes effort. That's all it really takes is your effort. Put the small amount of time in, but the effort and you will succeed. So this is James summarizing the LinkedIn challenge. I wish you the best in success and really take the time, invest in the effort, put the time in and the results will follow. Take care, have a great day.